Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing PK15 in a five-minute pool on ICC. In continuing with our theme of aggression today, I am playing the Modern Defense. Playing experimentally. PK15 is pretty high rated, 2363. I think I should play E5, and we're probably going to get a King's Indian-like position out of this. Sometimes they reinforce the center with Bishop E3. They could also play D5, whereupon I'll probably play Knight D4. Let me check this player's stats because I've never seen them before. They played about 115 five-minute games, peak rating of 24.54. Knight c6, I think, is the best move on move three in this line. I previously tried other moves. d6 is also okay if you're a King's Indian player, but I found that I have the best success with this knight c6 operation. He seems to be debating what to do. He plays d5. Okay, so let's jump into the center. And then bishop e3. So I can support the knight with c5. I think I should. Because if he takes Ampassan, I get to take with my d-pawn, and then my queen is assisting in protecting d4. So I believe bishop e3 is an inaccuracy. I don't think white should allow me to support the bishop or the knight this well. Okay, which way to take here? I think taking this way is best. And then we'll look to play d6 next. If I took with a bishop, I was a little worried white might continue with f4 in the near future and try to crowd me with e5, although maybe that was okay. Taking with the e-pawn would serve to open the bishop a bit more. So let's just get developed here. I can make an argument for f5. You know what? In the spirit of today's playing style, we're going for it. So I'm going to attempt to put the knight on f6. This is a much more uh, coherent setup than putting the knight on e7 and playing f5. I'd much rather have the knight here supporting the attack on the e4 pawn. That move should lose a pawn because I can take on e4, and after all the captures, I have bishop takes h3. So now I just want to figure out which way to take the pawn first. I'm not sure it matters too much. Let's take with the knight. Open the F file as well. Okay. So if bishop takes, I'm taking on g4. Maybe it does matter a little bit. Yeah, so he played g4 because he saw what was coming. I have this mobile center, though. Certainly I could play e3 if I like. could also play d3. d3, he's going to go knight c3, and this pawn's a goner, though. Maybe h5? Seems intriguing. Let's do that, actually. Spice this up a little bit. Knight there. Hmm. Queen h4, perhaps. Looks aggressive. Full speed ahead, guys. We're about even on the clocks. Okay, so now I can take on g4. I'm also looking at rook takes f2 shots or queen takes h3 even. But taking on g4 looks best. Doesn't it? Yeah, let's do that. And he takes there, okay. Hmm. Once again, I'm considering stuff on f2, but it's not really working at the moment. So I think I should just grab this pawn. And he wants a trade, queen h5. Yeah, I can't do much about this, so let's take that trade. Takes with the bishop. Okay, let's activate this guy. I haven't moved this light square bishop yet, but then again, I don't think it's necessary to do so. That move I didn't see. That attacks d6. That's kind of annoying. Hmm. All right, I guess I'm going to defend and try to continue with bishop f5 on the next move. He's going to get rook check in. Check. But we hide the king. No harm, no foul, right? Bishop g6. Annoying move. Because I don't really want to trade bishops. Hmm. In this case, I may have to take on e4. Which I really hate to do, but check. I think I got I to gotta do it. Now he's blockading these pawns. And he's probably going to continue with king h2. 
All right, let's get on the file. He can come up and win my pawn. Gave away a lot of my edge there. Because it looks like I'm losing the pawn back. So probably bishop h6 was inaccurate. Maybe I had something better leading up to that, but definitely bishop h6 was a culprit. If he plays f3, then I'm thinking bishop e3 is the way to go. Yeah, I'm going to lose the h-pawn no matter what I do, so I should just do this. Check. He's going to take h3. Although then I have bishop h4, maybe. Maybe I should play b6, first of all, just to rule out any c5 business. Yeah, let's do b6. We'll just get c5 blockaded, get this off a of light square. Yeah, it's even material. With opposite color bishops, we have drawish tendencies present in the position. But it's not yet a draw, by any means. Yeah, and he might rush through a c5 break. I sort of want to get my king up and participating. Let's do that. I'm controlling g1, so I'm not worried about a check there. His king is kind of stuck for the moment. He's going to go a5, okay. Hmm. I could play a5 myself, but I'm not sure... That's in my best interest. Maybe rook c8. But he has bishop d3. <laughs> Tough decisions here. I'm taking some time, I know. Uh, what to do? King f6, a5, bishop f4, something like that? Just doesn't look right. Okay, I'm going to go a5. I think he can trade and play rook b1, though. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to bring the king up. Let's go here. Check. 27 seconds left. This is not a good situation. I clearly misplayed this. C5. Hmm. Got to take. Huh. Time warning. Yeah, this is bad. He has bishop C6, Check. I think. Oh, that just drops the rook. Hmm, yeah, that was a, a very poorly played endgame by me. Honestly, I just wasn't sure what to do after a4. Even though I felt my position should be completely fine. Maybe bishop d2, something like that? Probably king g7 is already wrong. I found this endgame to be easier to play for white, despite me having this protected pass pawn and control the g-file. Ugly. Okay, let's go back and take a look at it. So I played the modern. And I mentioned that I like knight c6 on uh, move 3 quite a bit. I've experimented with c5 and d6, but like I said, this one seems to be giving the best results. Followed by a quick e5. I did not like what white did as far as bishop e3, because I really feel like after c5, black is looking good. Yeah. Computer already thinks black's doing fine. So he takes, I took with a C pawn. So now I have the bishop pair advantage. Knight d2. And I played for this plan involving f5 and knight f6. Castles and castles. So already big advantage for black. Yeah. Minus almost one and a half. And h3 seems to just drop a pawn. I took on e4. And now if bishop takes e4, then bishop takes h3, hitting the rook. So quite nice for black. So therefore he played bishop g4, or pawn g4, stopping my bishop from attacking down this diagonal. And now he's ready to take here. So I played h5. This looks good. Trying to shake up his pawn structure. 
This is a fragile structure, so I wanted to try to attack it. Knight g3. Yeah, we're already in plus two territory for black. I played queen h4. This seemed fine. I'm playing aggressively and again pressuring these pawns. Bishop took. I took g4. He took g6. So now I took on h3. Strangely, that didn't seem to help me much. The engine wants to go, maybe queen takes h3? Okay. So that stops his king from ever coming up anywhere. There's always rook takes f2 hanging in the air, which would take away a defender of the knight on g3. So if I could get that off, I would, I would try to. Maybe taking with the queen is better than g takes h3. Because as played, even though I was up a pawn, it, it never seemed like I had much. So here I traded. Bishop took. Yeah, and I criticized this move later because I didn't see the, the knight coming to e4 attacking d6. It didn't dawn on me that my d6 pawn is actually just weak. So hence rook f4, the engine suggestion right here, would cover that square at least for now. f3, now bishop h6. What if knight e4? Rook h4. Attacking the bishop. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and black has a counterattack going on. King h1. Oh, because I'm, I'm not actually threatening to win the bishop yet due to knight f6. So I played bishop h6, and he went knight e4. And I had to make this somewhat pathetic move, rook d8, defending the pawn. Position's just pretty sharp still. <laughs> b5. Yeah. Didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> I think the idea of b5 is actually to play this move, should white take, and get on the long diagonal towards white's king. So if, like, knight takes here, we take d5, and the position is opening up in favor of the bishops, even though black is not up a pawn anymore. So rook d8, king h1, bishop f5. Check. Yep, he gets a check here. And now bishop g6 was timely, because if white would have to move the knight away, then I'd be able to keep my bishop pair, and I'm still up a pawn. Yeah, I'm still up a pawn. So if you were to play something like knight g3, I get to do this, and I'm liking my chances here to convert that extra pawn. But bishop g6, now I have a unpleasant choice, because obviously I'd like to keep the game out of an opposite color bishop position, but if I take here, he gets so much activity, and he's double attacking the bishop and the pawn. I can't afford to do something like this. I'm going to get killed after rook ag1. Yeah, he's threatening rook g8 check and knight f6, and I'm far too passive here. Look at this dominant knight on e4. So bishop g6 compelled me to trade the, the bishops and enter this opposite color bishop position. Rook g8. Yep, king h2. I went here. He played f3. Yeah, and there's still a, an edge for black being claimed, but I think it's getting harder and harder because my h3 pawn is going to fall. Let's see what the engine wants to do. Take, take, d3. Okay, so something tactical. So if takes, I can take on f3. That makes sense because I stalled for a couple moves and really just played the end game Check. poorly. Take, take, king takes. Ah, king g7 is the best move. It's, oh, okay, I played b6 first, but soon I played king g7. So I wanted to do something like this and then give a check here, but he'll bring his king up to h4, and I didn't, really didn't see what that would gain me. Maybe I would go rook g2 after that. Maybe that's the plan. But still, you can play b4 here and try to menace the c5 breakthrough. I predict white can probably draw this with reasonable play. But b4, yeah, white can utilize the queenside pawns at this stage. So I played king g7, and I don't know why I spent so much time here, but I just, I was trying to find a solution to the position, and I didn't find one. I spent like half my re remaining time on this move. So if rook c8, I thought he was just going to play bishop d3. Okay, king f6, a5, bishop d2. The bishop d2 resource is not one that I saw trying to attack the pawns from behind. But even still, right? Can't he do... 
I guess I, I'm just holding the d6 pawn in that case. Yeah, and this should be a draw. So I played a5 too late on the clock. I'm already down over a minute now. One minute left, and he just played some natural-looking moves. Rook b1, rook b6. Check. Gave a check here. I didn't play king f6 because I thought he would go here. In fact, that's my best bet, though, and maybe I get check. some sort of perpetual. Is it too dangerous for him check. to try to get out of this perpetual down the g and the h files? Check. Probably. Yeah, he probably check. can't escape it because if he comes to d3, he gets mated check. here. Mate. So I have probably just a perpetual check. Instead, I did this, and <laughs> you saw what happened. He found c5 followed by d6, and I blundered my rook at the end in a position that I think is losing or close to it. Because now, after d6, one of his threats is rook b8 check, king f7, and then bishop d5 check, skewering my king and my rook, and I'm dead meat. So somehow, king f8 is the only move, but most likely it's losing. King f8, because if check, now I can at least play this move. Well, his d-pawn is very dangerous. So that was a nice breakthrough. Uh, c5 immediately followed by d6. Check. And then I lose. <laughs> okay, so a well-played opening by me. A reasonable middle game. But I think I started going astray right about here. Starting with bishop h6. Like overlooking knight e4 was a misstep by me. And then I think I should have played the opposite color bishop ending more practically. I was still looking for an advantage, and that advantage never materialized, and I lost the game. I should have just fired off some moves in retrospect and um, just been okay with strict equality, but I spent like some time trying to find that advantage, and all of a sudden I have 45 seconds left, and White has this plan of pushing, and I didn't know how to solve the problems. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back again soon with another one. Talk to you guys later.